Washington was a great man, general, and president, but he couldn't have done it all on his own. There was another man who helped him throughout most of his life. That was Washington's slave and best friend, William Billy Lee. This seldom talked about black man was Washington's best friend. Washington thought about him as his son. It's a little known fact that Billy was an instrumental key element in helping Washington win in the American Revolution and make decisions. When George Washington crossed the Delaware, it was Billy who had given him the idea because he was the most familiar with local landscape and area. History is written by the victors, not the losers. The story of how those men became victorious is a story all to its own. Billy Lee may be a footnote to history, but without his contributions, America would not be like it is today. This is the story of a man, unknown to history. Yes, he was a slave, but if people had known what he did and understand his contributions, it would mean so much more to patriotic Americans, including African Americans. Now, when we think of Washington, we don't think of him as owning slaves, although it was common practice for people of Washington's wealth to own slaves. Washington did not start out wealthy. He came from a middle class family, and he had to earn his wealth. He aspired to become more than an ordinary man, and he wanted to be famous. Washington as a youth would present himself as a well-mannered, respectable boy. At a young age, he began surveying land. Then one day, he volunteered to take a letter through the wilderness of Virginia. This letter was addressed to the French army, asking them to abandon the land they had claimed. Washington and a band of men trekked through the uncharted woods and rivers to deliver the letter. He gave it to the French army, and they refused to give the land back. Thus began the French and Indian War. Washington was given command over a regiment and attacked the French during the French and Indian War. There he won many battles and became a great commander. He then set to become a general in the uh, British Army, but was then rejected and eventually soured on the British Empire. After the war, he settled down, got married, and bought the plantation at Mount Vernon in Virginia. He had all this land and a grand house, but couldn't live and work on it all by himself. So naturally, he acquired some slaves. A few to start with, but on May 3, 1768, he went to Westmoreland County, Virginia, to Colonel John Lee's estate. There he found a young teenage boy by the name of Mulatto Will. He was a black slave, and something about him struck Washington. My great-great-grandfather, William Billy Lee, saw George Washington looking at him. He went over to him and looked straight up at him. George Washington then gave the slave seller some money, and Billy was now his. He kneeled down beside the boy and said, Boy, how would you like to come live with me and let me take care of you? Billy shook his head, yes, and grabbed George Washington's hand and they walked off. Washington had William do chores around his farm. Remarkably, he treated William as his son. Washington had no children of his own, except for a boy and a girl that Martha had before they were married. And George trained William like he was trained when he was young. He taught him how to read, write, and speak correctly, and how to hunt. Eventually, William became a great hunter bringing back foxes for George. Billy was a very hard worker. He did everything Washington asked him to do. He wanted to show Washington that he could do anything that was asked of him. He wanted his respect. Billy looked to Washington as his own father. He was taken from his parents at a young age and sold into slavery, like many his own age. This man gave him food, bed, knowledge, and friendship unlike any other. Most people back then weren't friends with their slaves. They saw them only as property. But Billy saw that Washington looked at him as his own son. <laughs> 
As William got older, he became a great hunter. He and Washington would go into the Virginia wilderness together. And William would charge at his game and was victorious at everything he did. Eventually, he and Washington became great drinking buddies. On this one trip they went on, they got really drunk one night. George Washington told some very revealing things to Billy. He told them how he wanted to be remembered in the world, how he wanted to be remembered for doing great things. Washington spilled his life ambitions to William, talking about how he wanted to be famous and that he thought he hadn't done enough with his life. Billy looked at him and tried to comfort him. Billy was a great worker, hunter, and farmer. He knew the land, and he knew about plants, herbs, and crops. He and George developed new crop rotation methods together and new ways of farming. Washington would take Billy to high-class parties. He would dress him up like a rich white person. He treated him like he would treat anyone else, and he told other people to do the same. People were amazed by Billy to see a slave talk and act so civilized. During these parties, people didn't know what to think of this black man walking around. People of that era thought very little of black people and slaves. George wanted to change that. After seeing Billy Lee, people rethought their judgment. They thought of him as a man, not as a slave, and that's what Washington wanted. Billy would tell his stories of he and Washington going hunting and adventures on the plantation. He was a very interesting man to talk to. His thoughts and views on current events were highly regarded. People were interested in what Billy Lee had to say, and they listened. He was kind, courteous, and a ladies' man. He was not able to establish a close relationship with a prospective wife because the only women in his environment were white. But later in his life, he did find a wife that was a freed slave, but this was much later. Now when people first settled in this country, they did so to get freedom. Freedom to live their lives the way they wanted to. To raise a family and to establish a business. They wanted to create a new world where every man is created equal. Such a new world was unheard of at the time. A free country was something no one had ever heard of before. To get that freedom, lives would have to be sacrificed and people's way of thinking would have to change. It was round about this time that people began to fight for their rights and ideas again. During this time of taxation without representation, King George ruled the colonies with an iron fist. During this time, people began to talk about a new way of government. A government for the people, by the people, to the people. And in 1774, delegates met in Philadelphia to talk about new rights, liberties, and freedoms. George Washington was the representative for Virginia, and when he would travel to Philadelphia, Lee would accompany him. War was on people's minds and in their thoughts. Then in the year 1775, the first shots were fired in Boston. The Second Continental Congress was held. There, they decided that George Washington would lead an army against British troops. He was now Commander-in-Chief. In July of 1775, the army was formed. This army was made up mainly of New Englanders, but they were not professional soldiers. They were only tradesmen, peasants, and farmers. Washington knew he had to train these men fast. So he and Billy Lee worked late at night together to develop training techniques to turn these men into soldiers. Although Billy Lee never gave orders, he watched Washington carry out the ingenious training techniques that they had developed together. I mean, Billy was just doing the same thing to them that George had done to him. George taught him to hunt and shoot. He brought some of those same teachings along with some of the lessons that he had learned over the years into those training exercises. He figured that if they could keep a few men alive 
as well as shoot a few rounds at the British and they would run away.